What's up, my friends? Today, we are going to break down a not-so-secret secret fall technique, and that is burning a spinnerbait. Now, I say not-so-secret because pretty much everybody has heard of burning a spinnerbait, but I say secret because very few people do it correctly and do it efficiently. It's not just as easy as throwing out there and just winding it in. There are some tricks to it, and this time of the year in the fall, this is absolutely deadly and a technique that we use all the time. So today, we're gonna break down how to do it, when to do it, why to do it. We're gonna show you all the setups, the baits. We're gonna talk through the theory so that you guys can apply it and catch more fish this fall. You ready, Jeff? Let's do it. All right, let's go, guys. Welcome to the Hookup Tackle. The Hookup Tackle is the world's largest showcase of Mega Bass products, featuring baits and colors not found at any other dealer. The hookup also offers a wide display of OSP, Evergreen, Depths, Lucky Craft, Jackal, and many more. The Hookup Tackle is owned and operated by family, is staffed by guides and verified tackle nerds who love helping anglers elevate their craft. If you're in the Phoenix area, we'd love to have you stop by our showroom and check out the wonderful world of Mega Bass and the Hookup for yourself. If you shop online, there are almost 10,000 SKUs of Mega Bass products alone with hundreds of other companies and new products being added daily. So next time you're looking for that hard to find bait, that color your fish have never seen before, or maybe you just want to elevate your game, look at thehookuptackle.com. All right, welcome back my friends. I am Ben with The Hookup Tackle, AKA The Tackle Otaku, being joined of course by my buddy Jeffrey the King. We are The Hookup Tackle USA. So today we are talking spinner baits and not just normal spinnerbait fishing. Today, we're specifically talking about burning a spinnerbait. Now, just in case you don't know, nothing comes to mind when I say burning, I'm talking about speed reeling, fishing a spinnerbait super fast in the fall to draw some of the most violent, vicious strikes you are gonna get all year. Now, this is a technique that's been around for ever right, since the spinnerbait has been born. But this is something that gets very little attention. You hear very few people talk about it and you can see out on the lake on a typical fall day and you go and there's 30, 40 boats around, you hardly see anybody doing it and they're missing the boat. So let's talk about burning a spinnerbait. Jeff, this is something that you and I have been doing a lot of recently. Yes. And it's just, would you say it's one of the more fun ways to fish convention? I, I know you're a swim bait guy but when you have to come to the dark side over here, talk to me about burning a spinnerbait. Um, well, I think the first time I was doing it, I, I picked it up and I'm like, yo, for some reason I feel like they're gonna eat a spinnerbait. And dude, the bite I was getting on it was just absolutely ridiculous. And so I was like, okay, maybe this is something. I think the next two trips, dude, it was just wide open on the spinnerbait, just burning it, burning it. And then it, like they're hitting it as fast as you're reeling it. So the strikes are just super violent. They're crushing it. And it just seemed like the spinnerbait was getting bites that some other baits weren't. Exactly. So let's let's break this down a little bit for you guys and talk about maybe the mindset and why burning a spinnerbait is so effective this time of the year. Now you, you can do this anytime that the fish are in the right mind frame, but I find that this time of the year, end of summer into early winter, this is the best time to do this. And so, you know, most people, when they throw a spinnerbait or get into spinnerbait fishing, when I usually think of spinnerbait fishing, I think of like early spring, right? The, the weather's warming up, everybody starts going fishing, the water's high, it's in the bushes, right? And so a spinnerbait's just a good option because you can throw it around the brush. It doesn't snag a lot. You can just kind of fish it at a pretty steady pace. And that time of the year, you know, the bass metabolism is still pretty low. They came out of winter, so they're, you know, cold and really low metabolism, and they're just kind of coming into the shallows. And so they're not super juiced. They're not really aggressive. They're not running real fast, swimming to chase stuff down. They're kind of just chilling by bushes, and if something easy with some vibration, some flash comes by, you know, they eat it. And fishing is generally good enough in the spring. You can almost catch them on anything, right? So spinnerbait is just a great way to, you know, pick that shallow cover water apart. So when we get to the fall and the fish start moving back into the shallows, you know, they've been offshore in the summer and they start moving back up into the shallows and starting to migrate to follow bait. 
A lot of guys pick up a spinnerbait and they fish it the same exact way that they fish it in the spring, right? They throw it by a bush and they wind it slow or they throw it down a dock and they wind it slow, right? And there are times when that's all you need to do and just like in the spring, a fish is positioned right and this slow moving bait comes by and they eat it and you catch them. But the difference between fall and spring is the behavior of the bass are much different now than they were six, seven months ago. The bass have been hanging out with some buddies all summer, mm -hmm. right? They've been schooled up, they've been in little groups, right? Um, they've been following offshore bait or sh set up on structure where they're feeding on, you know, shad and herring and different species of bait, gobies, if you guys are in the north. And they're much more aggressive. Their metabolism is much higher. They're much more juiced, right? They know, okay, the weather's cooling now instead of warming. So they know that winter's coming. So this is like their last chance to really kind of fatten up and feed while they've got some juice in them and some metabolism. So they're gonna be much more aggressive this time of the year than they typically would be like in the spring when they're in the shallows. So we can use that to our advantage and basically trick them and use their instinct against them to get them to eat a burned spinnerbait. So when you see fish this time of the year in the fall, bass relating to bait, usually you see the bass crushing the bait, whether it's in the shallows or offshore. This is the time of the year where you can see boils, you can see wolf packs and schools chasing bait up, right? So if they're used to seeing shad fleeing very quickly and you throw a bait in there and you move it very slowly, well, it doesn't really look like anything. It's not really drawing any attention. It doesn't look natural. It's not drawing an instinct. So that's where burning is going to come into play. This is also an amazing technique offshore. So we're slow moving a spinnerbait by a stump or a rock or a dock really is best for shallow water. Burning a spinnerbait is just as effective offshore in an open water as it is shallow and we'll kind of talk through why that happens so first off you know whatever spinnerbait you guys want to use is fine i'm going to break down the spinnerbaits that we use to give you guys a starting point and explain what it is and why it is that we're doing this okay so first off i always use a double willow Okay, now the willow is gonna be this shaped blade. Spinnerbaits usually come in single willow, double willow, Colorado willow, double Colorado, a bunch of different blade type combos, right? I'm always using double willow for burning a spinnerbait. And the reason for, well, two reasons for that. First off, this is the easiest blade to spin. So it requires the least amount of water resistance to get it to turn. So I can fish this the quickest, okay? The second reason is, is these blades are longer and you can hear just by me sitting here, Right, you hear that little clack? Well, that same sound can be made underwater, right? So as this thing is moving and spinning and you pause it and those blades clack, right? It's creating that same kind of knock sound. So it's giving me the most flash because it's the biggest blade, the easiest to turn so I can fish it the quickest. And if I do kind of a burn and pause every once in a while and I mix that pause in, the blades can clack together and give me some sound also, which is great in open water for calling fish. And it's great in muddy water for bringing fish to it when they can't necessarily see it visually. Now, we use a couple different spinner baits um, for this technique. We've experimented with almost all of them. I find that these are the best ones. So like I literally just went and grabbed the rods out of the boat, right? Um, so I'll show you. So this is a Megabass SV3 spinnerbait. So this is almost always my starting point. This is, I see this on your rods yes. a lot too, Jeff. That's so, the one that I like. Okay, so a couple things about this spinnerbait that we like. So first off, it's a compact spinnerbait, so it's pretty small. So it's a good one for matching bait that's of the smaller size. So if the fish are feeding on threadfin shad, gobies, a smaller bait fish, the SV3 is a great one. Let me try not to hook myself. That would be great That'd in be this perfect. episode. Okay. So this is a great one when you need something like normal to small size. The other reason we like this is if you notice on the head shape, it's got a unique kind of head design on there. Dude, I am a train wreck today. You okay right now? Yeah, I think I'm all right. I just need to be fishing. 
So you notice it has a unique head shape to it. It's much lower, it sinks much deeper than a traditional spinnerbait does. The design of the SV3 is actually to be more of a bottom contact spinnerbait and to help keep the spinnerbait down lower in the column. But we find that that head shape makes an excellent head shape for burning so you can fish it very quickly and it keeps it keeled. And it's important that the bait is keeled so it's constantly running straight. If the bait doesn't keel right, then it'll turn on its side and it'll kind of roll a little bit and it's not as effective that way. So we want to make sure that even at high speeds, the spinnerbait is tracking super straight. The other thing that's great about this bait is it's got a heavy gauge wire. So it's a real heavy gauge wire. Now this is important because a lot of times you're fishing it super fast and the fish, like Jeff said, they hit this thing so hard that if you have too light of line or too light of wire, then shit just goes wrong, right? You can break off on a bite. The spinner bait can bend in 42 different directions, right? So this heavy gauge wire is great because it allows me to stay on heavy line. It can withstand the impact of a heavy fish and I can pull the fish out of cover if I'm shallow. Now, they, Mega Bass designed these blades specifically for this heavy wire. And these blades are much thinner than traditional blades. So typically with heavy wire, you give up some vibration, but you get some strength. So with this one, you get the strength of heavy wire, but you keep the vibration of the thinner blades. So you kind of get all the best combinations. So that's why we typically choose this as our starting point. Now for me, as far as weights go, Half ounce and five eighths ounce are the two sizes you guys are gonna to wanna to be using. I start five eighths ounce 100% of the time. This is like my go-to, probably 90% of the time I live here. Half ounce is where I go if this is just too big. Where are you at, Jeff, in this mix? I normally start with half ounce. Okay. And if I feel like the fish aren't as shallow as I'd want them to, then I will go to five eighths. Okay. So, you know, experiment, play, for me, typically, if all I'm doing is running bank and fishing really shallow, the half ounce is perfect. But if I want the bait to move even faster and fish more open water, the 5 8 ounce is usually where I go. So the heavier you go, the deeper it's gonna wanna go, so the faster you're gonna have to retrieve it to keep the bait higher in the column, which is generally why I go to a 5 8 And speaking of the column, this is usually what we're trying to do, is keep the bait high in the column. So if I wanted to be right on the surface, I'd be throwing a buzz bait. If I want the bait to be kind of just below the water surface, then the burning of a spinner bait is one of the best ways to do it. And I want to keep that bait up because I want the fish to be looking and seeing the flash and seeing the vibration, just like shad or natural bait fish would be just burning past them. That's what I want to do. Now, there's no reason why you can't take it and sink it out into deep water and then just burn it back. But all that's gonna happen is you're gonna create this big bow and it's just gonna basically just come straight up, right? So this is really a top of the column type technique. It's a technique where you want the fish to be looking up and seeing that thing moving super fast. You're gonna utilize the brightness of the sky, the sun, the clouds, just the sky to kind of break up the silhouette so that all they're seeing is just that occasional flash, occasional color, a little bit of sound, and they strike because they think it's a, a bait fish that's broken away from the school that's panicked trying to get away, okay? So SV3, that's a great starting point and probably my starting point the majority of time. And again, 5 8 ounce, half ounce. Colors, I keep it in shad profiles or bait fish profiles, so wakasagis, white or you know if there's a little stain to the water or there's smallmouth around then i'll mix in some chartreuse like a chartreuse in white or an iu type color as well can be great now the other one for a heavy gauge wire that i will use a lot is the gancraft killers bait over now this is going to be more of a full size offering uh, again 5 8 ounce is usually where i start because it allows me to fish the bait very fast but of course you can go to a half ounce if that's better once you get to kind of a three quarter ounce size in spinner baits they become so heavy it's hard to keep them up so i find that for the really fast burning half ounce and 5 8 those are the two sweet spots but use whatever is working for you guys if you need to go even lighter to like a 3 8 or a quarter ounce great do it 
The problem is, is you go too light, there's not enough to keel it. And so the baits can have a tendency to roll, okay? But I will switch to the killer's bait over when I need more blade, okay? So with the SV3, the blades are very small, it's very compact. With the killer's bait over, the blades are very big. Let me take it out so you guys can see the difference here real quick. So you can see how much bigger the blades are on the Gancraft. So, you know, this is important when I need to create more sound. So you can hear that clacking just by me sitting so you can see the size difference. This is gonna create more flash, it's gonna create more sound as they pause. So what that means is as I'm burning it, every once in a while I just pause the bait, right? So I'll burn, I'll pause, I'll burn, I'll pause, and that way those blades are spinning and then when they pause, they clack together, okay? So I need more sound for open water or muddy water, then I'll mix in the Gancraft. Now, for that technique, I pretty much live on 16 pound fluoro. Okay, so you can go to 18 or 20 if you're fishing a lot of cover. 16 for me is kind of a sweet spot. It's got good castability, but it's really strong. So if I get a violent strike while I'm in the middle of just burning it really fast, it's enough and strong enough to absorb the shock from that to where it's not gonna break on me. So 16 pound is pretty much where I live. Uh, I like the J Floral Samurai uh, for this because it's not quite the castability of something like a sniper, but it gives me a little bit more impact resistance. And I don't really need castability when I'm throwing a 5 8 ounce spinnerbait. Uh, it's heavy, it's really compact, the wind's not really gonna hold it up. So I can do with a little bit stiffer line. I'd rather have that little extra impact, so that's why I go here. So I live here. Every once in a while, I will add a trailer hook to it. So I always keep trailer hooks uh, on standby, again, these baits are moving really fast. So if you're if you're moving them and you're burning it and a fish is, is, you're feeling the fish bite, but they're just not hooking up, they may just be behind the bait. So sometimes adding a trailer hook can be an important tool to help you land more fish. I try not to add the trailer hook because the majority of time uh, they smoke this thing. You can't out reel a bass. Do you think you could outreel a bass? Absolutely not. Yeah, I don't think you could outreel a bass. Sometimes it feels like you're just fishing so fast that there's no way a fish can eat it. I don't think you can out outreel them. So no matter what, no matter how fast you're fishing this thing, they can see it. They can target in on it. They know it's coming. So the problem a lot of times with adding that trailer hook is the fish that are eating this are aggressively attacking it. They think it's a real bait. So they are getting the whole thing in their mouth. So if you set that trailer hook back too far, you're gonna end up hooking them in the gills a lot. And they're gonna bleed, you're gonna hurt them, you're gonna kill them. So I generally just go straight out of package. I almost never use a soft plastic trailer because all that's gonna do is slow me down. Now, if you want to change your color a little bit, then you can maybe add a soft plastic trailer. You could put, you know, something a little chartreuse or, you know, with a little bit of flake just to give yourself a color pop if that might help be a trigger mechanism. If I do a trailer, it's almost always like a shad tail or a swing impact style trailer. Something like this. So OSP makes the HP shad tail. KTEC makes the swing impact, not the fat swing impact, the skinny one. Okay, so I want the least amount of resistance. I don't want a big paddle tail back there. I don't want I don't want a lot of stuff back there. I want it to just slice through the water and be very fast. Again, the only thing this is gonna do is just give me a little bit of color pop if I need it. Okay, so if I feel like I'm fishing white and like, ah oh, man, I just want a little bit of chartreuse, I could add a little chartreuse to the back of it and have it. Or if I just want a little flake, right, I can add it. So occasionally I will do a trailer, but I would say 95% of the time it's bait by itself. Now, the one mod I will do to this, and I do this a lot, and this is one of my favorite mods, I've talked about it a lot, is I will add the plus blades to it. So Genius Project, they make a product called the Plus Blades. You can see it basically uh, almost makes my spinnerbait look more a rig -ish, right? So the Plus Blade looks like that guy. Okay, so it's just a little wire, basically a wire contraption with four blades on it 
that literally just snaps on to the front of your spinner bait. So it just clips onto the front and it basically just gives you four more blades underneath it. They're small. So this is a great one when the fish are feeding on like micro bait. So a lot of times you see them and they're feeding on big full size shad, don't need this. But a lot of times you see them and they're eating tiny little bait still, even in the fall, it could be small shad, it could be minnows, it could be fry still. You know, a lot of times you'll get, you know, late uh, summer or early fall shad spawns and so you get a lot of small stuff. So, you know, adding this plus blade just gives it a, another element. It looks like a whole little pod and a whole school of fish going by and they violently strike this thing. So I will add this a lot. Again, I just throw it on the, the SV3 is perfect for the plus blade because it's compact anyway, so it keeps the profile down. The one little tip I will give you is you're gonna wanna get some type of keeper. I use this decoy silicone keeper. This one works great. You can also use the eye guard, but that keeper will just slide up and over the spinner bait there and it'll just hold that plus blade in place. Okay, so it just helps keep it on the spinner bait. The one downside of these plus blades, especially when you catch fish, is they have a tendency to come off the spinnerbait and slide up your line. Then you end up having to cut your spinnerbait off, slide it back, reattach it, retie the spinnerbait. So, you know, there's a couple extra steps that are somewhat of a hassle, but you're gonna get bites that you're not going to get without it. So it's an important tool for me and one that I always keep rigged up, okay? Now, let's talk about the rods really quick for this. I have basically three main setups for my spinner bait. So the one in my hand, this is the Destroyer P5 Mad Bull. This is a great one for burning a bait because the rod bends deep through the blank, right? So this is one that I can fish super, super fast. It's sensitive, but then when I get that violent strike, the rod helps absorb some of that strike. And then I've got plenty of power for setting the hook and landing that fish. So this is kind of my open water masterpiece rod. So if I'm fishing out across a point in open water, you know, chasing down schools or anything like that, it always goes on the Mad Bull. Uh, seven to one or eight to one reel. I love the Steez A's. Um, I love the Metanium DC's, the Zillions. Any of those are great, whatever reel works for you. Uh, but you want it to be a seven to one or eight to one. I think seven to one's perfect. Eight to one, if it's a low speed eight, can be good. So like Daiwa makes eight one to one, that's perfect. But once you start playing in the eight three, eight five, nines, they go so fast that your spinner baits are gonna start lifting to the side, okay? 16 pound fluoro again. This other guy here, this one is the, actually the seven two uh, heavy Daiwa Steez AGS, which by accident, Jeff and I figured out, makes an incredible spinnerbait. Oh, it's fire. Rod. Yeah. Oh, I love that rod. So this rod is actually built for pitching. It's called the power pitch. It's a great one for just kind of pitching around and that kind of stuff, but it's got this beautiful soft tip on it. So for shallow water, for like running bank, and maybe there's some trees or some brush, when you just need a really powerful rod, this rod is so dope. It's super sensitive so you can feel Every limb that the spinnerbait hits, every rock the spinnerbait hits, you you have perfect contact to yourself. It's got enough tips so you can cast accurately, but then it's just all straight power. It works amazingly well for a spinnerbait. So this is the other one, again, seven to one reel, and you're dialed. Now, the last setup that I use is for a different style spinnerbait, and this is for a light wire spinnerbait. Now this comes into play for me probably about 15 to 20% of the time. I'd say the majority of the time, it's a heavy wire, heavy gauge, like we just talked about the SV3. Sometimes though, especially in open water, the fish really need extra vibration, extra something, right? To get them to trigger. So when that is the case, I will switch up to something like the OSP, uh, this is the High Pitcher Max. So the two spinner baits I use is the High Pitcher Max and the Mega Bass V9, okay? Now, both of these are designed with lighter wire. Uh, they're designed to fish very fast. So you can see this gauge wire has a ton of flex to it, right? So this isn't one that's gonna be great for like throwing next to a stump and hauling a big giant fish out, right? This is going to really flex and pulse as those blades are kicking back there. It's got 
you know, some longer strands of skirt, so I don't really need a trailer. It's just got everything perfect on it. The only thing you need to keep in mind is that it's got all this flex, okay? But there are times when they won't touch a spinnerbait unless it's got that flex in the wire. It's just pulsing differently. So for that, I throw another Steez, the 7.3. Uh, medium heavy. This is the utility player. It's kind of their all-purpose jig and worm rod. But again, it's an amazing open water spinnerbait. This is my burning spinnerbait. This is my skinny dipper rod for sure. There's so many things you can do with this rod. But you can see, even though it's fast, it bends pretty far down into the blank. So it's going to absorb a lot of that shock with the spinnerbait when they eat it. I will lighten my line here and I will go to 14 pound, okay? So for this, I like to go a little bit lighter, and that's again to not overpower the arms uh, and the light wire of that spinner bait, okay? You can go 16 pound, but once you kind of get to 16 pound, the line is so strong that you're gonna find that your wire on those light wires are just gonna open up a lot, okay? So you've got to adjust your you know, hook setting, you've got to adjust your line, you got to down play everything, to make up for the lighter wire of these baits. Now, again, color-wise, I stay in whites. All right, whites, maybe add something a little chartreuse, again, if there's small mouth uh, or some murky water. And again, on the hook set with these things, literally all we're doing is we're casting out, right? I wanna keep, if I'm throwing straight, okay? So Jeff is my casting angle. So I'm throwing straight out. I want to keep my rod at about a 30 to 40 degree angle off to the side of where my actual spinner rate is. That's important, especially with the lighter wire, because you want the fish to be able to absorb and load that rod a little bit. If you don't have any load in any give at all, it's just gonna bend and you're gonna, you're gonna end up losing fish, okay? So we're burning this in, and when we get a bite, all we're doing is turning, okay? There's no hook set needed here. Okay, so we're winding, 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 bite. All we do is turn, okay? And 90% of the time, you've got them, okay? Because the bait's moving fast, they're moving fast, there's just so much happening that they get hooked. But the advantage of just turning is, boom, you get a bite, and you, you turn, and they missed it. If you keep going, they will almost always come back, okay? Because they think this is something literally fleeing from them. They missed it, and it's still fleeing, and still on the same path, they will come back even more violent the second time and crush it. Whereas if you actually swing and set the hook, then it flings the bait out, it stops moving, they know that that's bullshit, I ain't gonna eat that thing anymore, right? So that little turn, right? Just that little side turn, that's perfect. All right guys, that is a wrap. I want you guys to get these out on the water, start playing with them, start moving these baits quickly. If you guys have any questions, drop them down below and I will be happy to answer them for you. Jeff will leave links to the products if you wanna check any of them out closer, you can. I'm really excited for you guys to implement this in to your arsenal. And remember, you can't fish these things fast enough, but every once in a while, just give it a little pause, let those blades clack, and then go back to the speed. I look forward to seeing what you guys catch. Until next time, guys, thank you for the support for the business. Thank you for watching, and we will see you guys soon. Peace out.